Hallo, Johanna. Hallo, hi. Hi, grüß dich. Hallo, schön, dich ja, zu ja, sehen. Ja. Och, oh, wenn auch leider nur virtuell. Wie geht Aber es wirklich, dir? Ne? Ja, gut, danke. Alles gut. <lacht> Ähm, wir wollten heute auf Englisch sprechen. Ne? Wir mhm. haben so viele Anfragen bekommen, vor allen Dingen von unseren französischen Freunden. Das ist <lacht> so it's good we talk in English and not in French. Whew. Exactly, exactly. But yeah, good to see you. Yeah, same to you. It's the, nice. We are here in the in the yeah in the last days of of our exhibition where we are showing the works of Johanna Reich. Here on the wall, you you see. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not much left. Wow. Not much left, exactly. <laughs> If, uh, I yeah. don't know. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> and Saturday there was another client who picked up his work, and uh, oh, wow. we have mm -hmm. somebody coming on Friday. So um, you have to produce more, my dear. Yeah, I just produced some. So okay. there, yes. I just got them from yeah. the. Uh, stores, so yeah. everything's fine. We can continue <laughs> and go on with the work. We make a waiting list now. Huh? Yeah, th that's a brilliant idea. On yeah. Instagram. <laughs> Here is Katja. Hi, Katja. Nice to see you. Wonderful. <laughs> okay, so our our start is um, Katja yes. with Katja. Yeah. Hi, Johanna. So, as usual, um, we would like to start with a little introduction. I mean, a lot of uh, Wonderful. viewers uh, might know you, but for those who are new uh, in our talk, um, I can tell them that Johanna Reich is an artist who lives in Cologne, and she's mostly described as a media artist, but in fact her work includes um, many different techniques. She uses video, photography, media installations, but also painting and sculpture, which she often combines into hybrid works. And um, she um, also researches histor historical image material and um, collects oral history, and she engages other people in participatory projects, which is quite interesting. And so we have in this show three uh, different works that we can show. We have been working with her several times uh, in a solo show two years ago, um, parallel to her solo show at the Max Ernst Museum in Brühl. And um, then she was um, represented in our show Feminine and now on Equal, ter on equal Terms too. So um, we have, been, have had the pleasure to show her several times many different works. She, um, yeah, um, She explores the um, relationship between the creation and the perception of images, and also between um, the virtual world and the physical world. And um, yeah, we can show some very interesting um, combined works in this show. Currently, her work is also on view in an um, exhibition in Düsseldorf, which just uh, reopened and is um, postponed until the end is postponed until August uh, this year. It's um, um, at the Kunsthalle um, Düsseldorf, subject and object, and um, yeah, maybe Johanna can also tell us a bit about her private project because she did some projections in her private neighbor neighborhood, and we can show. Yes, some yes, stuff. definitely. <laughs> so, but now we start with this exhibition here, and yeah. uh, so we are speaking. We are here in this exhibition on equal terms number two, and um, yeah, unfortunately it was. Uh, closed very soon after the opening and now since last week it's reopened and we have a lot of visitors at the moment and so your work um, yeah, is here on this wall and maybe you can tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, the work, uh, the title of the work is The Ethics of Coding and uh, during the last yeah, nine years I collected images that were censored by Facebook, by the algorithm of Facebook. So um, these images uh, that were censored uh, were historical nudes. So like all the famous nudes of art history. And um, yeah, it was like every year, several of the, most of the famous uh, paintings um, like I think you all know these paintings were censored and um, I thought yeah that's really a statement of such a big company um, like Facebook 
that they didn't do anything against it because it would be very, very easy to tell the algorithm, okay, that's art, that's the Venus of Willendorf, and um, we don't have to censor that, that because, of course, that's a nice idea to, like, against pornography or something to have an algorithm that's like telling okay there's a pornographic image to um, mark that I'm totally okay with that but with art history it's really really a strange thing I think yeah. and so yeah I collected these images and then I did a kind of performance so these parts the algorithm marked I also marked, so all the breasts, and I did an ink drawings with this performance, and so on the little ink drawings, you only see the censored parts of these images, and yeah, it's very nice to see it now again, but of course, it's much, much better to see it in person in the gallery space, and because um, it's nice, Priska, that you go so close because um, I think on the paper you really see it. It looks like skin. It's fragile. It's, yeah, it's really something's happening there. And usually when you only have, like us, like the digital conversation, it's, yeah, it's still not the same than to be there in person. And it's a very nice uh, paper as well that you're using here. Huh? Yeah. It's not quite flat. It kind of reacts to the paint, to the liquid paint. So it's, it gets well, alive somehow when, you, when yes. you touch it with your brush. And you use the brush to defend um, the artist's um, perspective, right? Absolutely. <laughs> your weapon is the brush. <laughs> yes, a little like that. And um, what I also, there's also another perspective, of course, uh, you can have on the whole work because um, it's also... Yeah, I say it with a smile, but uh, you can say it's a, a feminist algorithm because the algorithm is censoring all these passive nudes of art history. This is also, yeah. of course, the same, another layer when we have the discussion of, okay, um, an image is censored, what does it mean to us? And I think it's also interesting Absolutely, at the moment, when we think about society and when we think about um, how does the world look like and um, when we have the perspective for the next year, for the next years, um, how should be our world, our society look like? And uh, will we program a society on these old um, issues, themes, and ethics are, yeah, what, what are we going to do? And I think that's so important to think about it now or yesterday, but yeah. not too late. Yeah, yeah. But we are in this, in this really moment of, of zero. Everything is restarting mm -hmm. slowly now. So here, at least here yes. in Germany, not in other countries, of course. And in the south, all, all this, the, the southern countries, the crisis is, is getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. And, uh, but we have the chance to do something now, to think about a lot of things, to, yeah, to think about how we would like to live. And uh, I think the, the art and the artists are very important in these circumstances. Do you have the feeling mm -hmm. that you are more uh, um, hurt now in these days? Or is there... How do you feel? Yeah, that's that's a big question, of course. It's just like, um, <laughs> I'm hoping that it's a yeah. bit like that. Of course, I'm, I'm invited to talks. I'm, um, yeah, there's a lot of conversation going on on the social networks. But yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I think we have to be louder. Our voice yeah. really has to be heard. And, and yeah, I'm really thinking about that, how we can um, be more connected and really focus 
um, things and become a very loud voice. It's compared to, it's it's very, very good and precious thing that we have Greta Thunberg, for example. She became mm. really a voice of her generation. But yeah. we, need, we need more, of course. We need more. Yeah. Do you have the impression that, that art has become more more... Yeah, political un engaged, or that there are more artists now. Um, out yeah, there I think there is no other choice. I think okay. it's really yeah. we are in in crisis. I think we have been before, also, of yeah. course. You you know about that. You know about all these issues. Also, Karl Heinz is talking about, like um, me, for example. I thought um, the big pandemic will be a digital one. You know, yeah. just like a, a really digital crisis, and we all know about that. We we know about the the climate crisis. We know about like the um, digital digitization, and um, a lot of jobs will be lost in the future. And we have to really think about a new society. Mm. To yeah, to go on. It's it's really now, now, now. That's the only thing I can say. Yeah. I saw yesterday on a tele on, uh, in television that there is an artist, a female artist. She is that was her her uh, yeah, performance to eat mm -hmm. her own meat. Can you imagine that she okay. was really cutting meat out of her body and cooking it and eating it? Less, just like wow. this tiny thing, you know. But if you Mm -hmm. I was looking at it, it was in Kulturzeit and mm -hmm. you know, it, was, it was incredible. So this is a statement. Huh? This is really... this a statement. Yes. <laughs> so but maybe I would prefer to, to do something else. <laughs> I show what you yeah, are but doing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so here's another work from, from you, which I love very much as well. A little live performance. Yeah, yeah, it's about uh, web uh, crawler. I don't know um, the most of you know these search bots. So I did program a search bot, and I was collecting um, like sentences and phrases about all the most or the most important um, comments and topics um, we had during the last years. Unfortunately, not Corona. So I did uh, like the research on artificial uh, intelligence, on climate change, on the digital revolution, on gender, the turn of uh, democratic systems. So I have to, I now have to really uh, add pandemic maybe. Um, and so the search bot collected me a lot of phrases and um, I decided which phrases to um, to take. And now these phrases are walking through the room, moving through the room as a performance. And they are projected on the walls, on the architecture, but also uh, onto everyone who's entering the gallery, the art space. And what I very much like is that all these phrases that are yeah surrounding us they become very small and then again very huge and big and i think uh, for me that's really um, my feeling i have of, of these times it's just like i'm overwhelmed of phrases thoughts of the future and um, sentences and everything and that's really like getting bigger in my head and small again. And this is really my, my feeling. But uh, what I like most about the work is that I also added some poems because it's just like the search bot uh, collected all these phrases and I wanted to put something human inside of this work. And I think um, this is so wonderful when you read a poem, I think, Sometimes you just stop for a while, for an instant, and you, you just uh, listen to it, and you're just into that moment. And I think that's also something very precious to have. So, yeah. my, my experience with, with this work, of course, the performance we only make, make once mm -hmm. in a while when we have visitors here. But um, so during the whole day, we, we just had, mm -hmm. had it on, so it was just... Uh, 
uh, projecting different sentences mm -hmm. on the wall yeah. and um, and and um, so you are constantly with these phrases and then you see them and then sometimes mm -hmm. you are, oh you are in a poem so it's it's really like like something mm -hmm. uh, I appreciated very much so it was always very I was very very happy to go to see it and to to pass by and read these different things and then sometimes you are a little bit shocked what you're reading and then sometimes you have yeah. this this really poetic uh, Moment, idea of yeah. Yeah. and they're projecting not only onto the walls but also onto, onto um, visitors and uh, mm -hmm. or ourselves and this was also the case in your in the opening during the opening of your solo show at the a Kunstverein Leverkusen um, a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. There was a dark room with uh, several media installations, rather dark, um, several projections. And among others, these two crawlers were driving around and projecting onto um, all, all people's uh, legs and trousers. And it was really uh, like, yeah, a bit like living creatures. Yeah. Be part. Absolutely. No, I really, I also really enjoyed that opening. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I also like the way to, to interact with the work. It was really, really nice. Also, um, when some kids entered the space, it was also very, very nice to see how they interact with the work, with art, and art becomes us in a way and yeah there were even some dogs and one dog was quite nervous and the other was totally yeah. calm and um, yeah, yeah. or maybe some people just wanting to have a nice small talk and they were kind of disturbed or irritated <laughs> by these yes. uh, little robots and um, it was a different um, atmosphere yeah yeah there's also something i can recommend to people who are boring on instagram you can find a lot of videos where cats are sitting on the Yeah. Vacuum cleaner, <laughs> but uh, anyway, <laughs> it's just... yeah. and um, yeah, tell us about your project. So uh, during this Corona times, you started to project from out of your window or on the other side of of, of yeah. the house. Tell us about it. What, yeah, what it's it's of course. I think like like everyone else, uh, it was such a strange time and such a strange feeling when all the art spaces, your gallery, the museums, everything was shut down. And yeah. um, of course, I'm I'm a big yeah. I I love the digital world. I'm um, I think there's a huge potential in it, and I like also the democratic approach of it. But also. I um, I think during these times, these times, it's so important also to be present as an artist and also with art and not to disappear. And uh, so I thought, okay, for me, it's also so important to be in the outside world at the same time, not only in the digital world. And so I just did a very small thing, nothing special, nothing... Um, so I just uh, opened the window and uh, then I projected on the facade of our neighbor's house. And um, yeah, it, it was so beautiful to see because um, it was really during that the first period of lockdown and really everybody was inside. And sometimes during the nighttime, you could see someone who uh, was walking by or just like getting some fresh air. And for me, it, there was this one moment when uh, there was uh, like an old man, he was walking by and then he stood there and then he just like smiled and he said nothing but just this hand sign. And it was uh, such a wonderful moment. And he was just like, I don't know, be before he... He looked so sad and so and, and then there was this big smile on his face and uh, also it was a very very nice um, time to get to know my neighbors like yeah. also <laughs> it was very very funny because uh, um, like uh, sometimes I could they came out or some of them I could see as a reflection in the window um, on the neighbor's house and they were just waving and uh, or shouting yeah thank you 
<laughs> or something. So uh, for me, this was a very, very special and precious time to be there with art. Um, yeah, just for really for few people. So, but uh, I think uh, this doesn't matter. It matters that we go out, that we oh. are there, that art is still there, and not only um, in the digital space, of course. Yeah, this is this is also perfectly merging private space and public space. Mm -hmm. uh, in yeah, a special situation. Of course, of course, it is. But then I saw you invited as well other artists to. to be yeah, artists yeah. Perfect. It's uh, just like because in Germany we are in a way back to normal. So I thought, okay, I um, have to stop my daily or nightly projections. And I thought, um, but I wanted to continue because I also had such a nice uh, interchange with so many artists, also from New York, from Mark was here. Hello. I don't know if you're still there. Um, Really, I got to know many artists just by doing that. And so I yeah. thought, okay, I could invite friends, artist friends, mm -hmm. um, just so I will do it every Friday night. Ah, hi, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I invite them, just uh, I'm screening them on Friday. So we started uh, last Friday with uh, Pauline Fabri. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I screened like this wonderful icebergs from Iceland. And this is also maybe a bit a connection of this Fridays for Future. And yeah. next week I will continue with the Berlin artist, um, Adriane Wachholz. And yeah, yeah, then I will go on. So I think this, yeah, this is also a very nice mixture of doing the real stuff in my street, my house, and also, of course, posting it again on Instagram. This is, yeah, I think yeah. this is the, yeah, the way we we work, we live, we yeah. share. I think there is no way. I think I, I so we did it since, uh, yeah, mm. since the lockdown, we did always mm. these, these talks on Instagram. Yeah. So the one side is, of course, we hate it because we can't see the, the, the art mm. uh, the reality. But on the other side, there is no choice yeah. at the moment. This is no, no, of course not. To continue to do something. Yeah. It's just a substitute and there's always this distance. But at the same time, sometimes we feel have the feeling that we get more personal at the same time. Because yes. we all try to show something from what's going on inside and... and um, and trying to, to build a bridge. So absolutely more, maybe more emotions or more um, insight than we would in a normal. Yeah, account. absolutely. I thought also that it's very interesting to have, um, because the format is different, isn't it? It's just like, I'm also closer with my face and with, mm -hmm. this is also, I think, a way to, to talk also more personal or intimate in a way. And also I saw um, a lot of your talks and I also thought, oh, wow, I didn't know that. And uh, there were so many interesting conversations. And that's also, yeah, that's a wonderful chance, I think. Yeah, yeah all, this, um, this pri all these private places also become public because we talked to a lot of people who were at home. So we yeah. see their, yes, um, their yes, bookshelves yes, in the yes. background <laughs> and um, are they, uh, I mean, like in their normal mm. clothing that they wear at home to, to be comfortable and um, maybe <laughs> not, not with complete makeup, but just as they, they are. And um, yeah, it's, we, in a way we get closer to each other. And um, you, you are a professor as well in, in Unix. So how do you engage with your students at the moment? How is this work? Yeah, this, this is also, it was a weird, weird uh, situation because um, I started uh, in April and until yeah. now I haven't seen my students in real, so oh, just yeah. online. And yeah. of course we do every week um, like this video conference and also some solo appointments. But of course this is weird and also I still find it very exhausting and difficult to talk about art. You know, this is also with students, this is so fragile and this is so personal. And then you haven't seen each other, never, never. And you have to show something so personal. This yeah. is really um, challenging. And 
Oh yeah, here's one of my students, Martina, oh. and she's in Italy. Wow, and they are doing really. This is so unbelievable because I have like Martina. She's in Italy at the moment, and yeah. um, like another one. He's in um, in Spain, and yeah. um, this is really. They're really like having a hard time. I think also in Quarantina, but um, we also because. The students are really in bad situations. I also have to to say that because um, I think not many people know that some of the foreign students really don't have any money. They, it's yeah. really a, a very existential situation, and we are starting next week a very nice thing. We did a YouTube channel with all the students, and they okay. present work and. So we really, yeah, started to do something and. Um, we hope that they can get some some funding, some financial support and also to show their works. And this is very nice to have this connection in the digital world. Yeah. Also, yeah, to include students from yeah, yeah. also from Portugal. So we have different countries and we gather together. So this is also a nice, nice thing. It would be very nice if, if the politicians would use this moment for, for to establish this unconditional income. Huh? This, yes, the definitely, for definitely. All the artists and solo yes. standing for all the people that, that are in these jobs that are, yeah. would, be, would have something. Yeah, and you did say. that talk. Didn't yeah. you? When was it? Was it two years ago? With uh, with uh, ah with 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 mm -hmm. uh, DM. With, yeah. Uh, no, it was three years ago. Three years ago, yeah. So. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, the founder Von, of, of of the DM. DM. Ich komme jetzt auch gerade nicht drauf. Oh my sorry. goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. So one We're of getting the old. biggest <laughs> entrepreneur here in, in Germany. Oh my god. Oh God, oh God. But this Nobody is knows that. Uh, brain, you know, this is Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> too many. Ah, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. No, that would yeah. be very important and very good if it would would start. And I'm not. I'm. I don't understand why there is no political mm -hmm. party that is taking up this subject now. So you hear from times to times a little bit, but yes, of course, there is this big petition. Um, uh, which are also signed, but of course we we have to put more pressure on it. I I also don't know. It's really like, uh, yeah. I th I think so for for the people from 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 the other countries, you know, Germany seems everything is fine, but in reality it doesn't feel so. It's like like everything is open, yeah. but we don't know what is going on. There are a lot of no. demonstrations outside. We don't know if not. Uh, the infection rate will, will raise very, very quickly, very soon. And so it's a really very strange situation. I think for, for me, I'm a little bit more sad now than I was maybe three weeks ago, because yeah. now I don't, it's so insecure, you know, before I knew mm. we had to take yes. care all the time and it's dangerous. And, and now you don't know, is it correct to open up the gallery or is it wrong? You know, you don't know. Yeah, should I course. go to a museum or shouldn't I go to a museum? Mm. So it's everything. Yes. It's, it's, it's really, yeah, it's, of course, it's as long as we are in, in good health, everything is fine. But... Yeah, and under the surface, a big social mm. gap is growing and it's not yet visible, yes. but um, it comes yeah. later. Yeah. No, it it is difficult, absolutely. And I also th see that there is uh, there's such a deep longing for a normal life that sometimes I think people just don't want to wear masks anymore. They don't want. They are so tired of all of this. But I yeah. also think, yeah, <laughs> maybe this is totally human, of course. But uh, yeah, we we should be. <laughs> I don't know more yeah more intelligent I, I don't know because we know how fast it can be that yeah, yeah, yeah. but everything's back and yeah, so we, of we, course it, it will come society so. starts to polarize a lot uh, in this situation mm -hmm. like those who are yeah. against or, or, or for the masks and against yeah. the vaccine or or for it and so if we have to to um uh, bridge this this gap as well mm -hmm. and and stay in, in in dialogue 
Of course. But on the other side, so, the, so we have there's a lot of of, of good things as well mm. because for climate change, you know, there is more more the things that there's more sensibility exactly, and there is there are a lot of people uh, that that we can't we can't continue as before, and therefore there's a lot of change anyway anywhere. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah. hopefully, yes. Let's be positive. We have yes. to. There is no. We have no choice. No, absolutely. We have no choice. I we, we have to. I, I, yeah. I had an. I, I read an, an, an interview where somebody was thinking, you ha we have to be aware about the situation, and we have about aware of what is going on in the world, and with all these negative things that are going on at the moment, you know, we, it's, it's, we have to inform ourselves, we can't go away and look, look, don't look at it. But on the other way, we should think about a positive future and work yes. on this because we can't, it's, we, it's not good if the, the, the virus is killing us without uh, um, being there. In, in our body, you know. Of course. We, we don't need to be too anxious. We have to in, think about Yes, yes, future. absolutely. I totally agree with you because we, I also think it's, um, it's like the Lutheranian thing just to yeah. plant a tree and yeah i think yeah. that's uh, yeah I, absolutely i think we as long as we can breathe and do something we have to do something yeah. and yeah. Uh, i also see this uh, spirit i think in in your gallery always just like finding new ways finding new things and i think this is also so important for the art world because we also have to invent new things new yeah, but, but ways a lot of new things are in um, Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> but more also when we look at the art fairs or all the big events. So, uh, of course, we don't know when no. we can go back to these kind of things. I don't know. I, I think it was very so, interesting because we had the, the impression that everything is fine and we open and museums are open, galleries are open and... And then, uh, you know, and I, 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 I made a decision, you know, I made a decision, or you know about it, that, that I will move to, to a smaller space because yes. I don't believe in these big events anymore at that moment. So that's, yes. I, I don't believe in this uh, kind of, of having a gallery like we have here, like with big parties and big vernissage openings, you know, yes. that's, that's not possible for me, at least it is not possible to do so. I'm too afraid. I'm too afraid of other people. I'm like a little bit like this often when I see, see other people, which uh, I don't like at all. But, uh, and then yesterday, and then I was thinking, ah, am I wrong? Maybe I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm exaggerating. And then yesterday mm -hmm. was this message that, and his biennial was postponed, and yes. I was like, oh, that was really like a oh, knock in the face. That's, that's mm. uh, such an important event for the arts. Community. Yes, of course, of course. It's like, like, oh, because I was always hoping next year in May everything will be fine. We're back. Mm, <laughs> We're back. Yes. Exactly. No, no, but, but we, we don't really know. We hope, we hope, we hope. So we uh, say uh, that. But, but I also think we have to find the qualities um in in different yeah ways of presenting of talking of yeah, yeah. To doing art and absolutely maybe we go now to 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 the basement to the cave <laughs> to your great work and um yeah with about humankind about what humans are able to do Okay. <laughs> okay, we are back. <laughs> um, I just see beautiful discussion. Hello, the, he, you are from you are from San Francisco, huh? This is, I think, Dennis. We're one one person. So okay, if well, um, if the public hello. has questions, would be nice. You can please type it in. So we are going now downstairs to. A beautiful work by Johanna Aladinier, to the into the light, is the title. Yeah. So here we are. Yeah, great. So maybe you can cannot come 
go so it maybe comes some so, bit closer yeah yes. perfect perfect because the light situation of the smartphone is always a bit <laughs> yeah. difficult yeah thank you so much yeah i um last year i went to south uh, germany and close uh, close to uh, the area of stuttgart there is a place called holzmaden And um, in this area, it's very interesting. Um, you can find there is um, a really um, special um, place and from the Jurassic period. And you can find fossils that are almost 180 million years old. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's a wonderful place to be there. And you can find... Um, a lot of fossils there easily and my son always wanted to go there because he was so interested and I said oh yeah I come with you and we went there with the whole family and then I really got mad because uh, for me of course I did knew that from books and uh, also saw fossils before but it was so different when I stand there and um, yeah this is an art schiefer you know I don't know the English word. Um, I stand there and you could really like um, get the stones and you could uh, um, grab some stones and also open the stones and then you saw fossils and these fossils um, were like 180 million years into, they have disappeared into darkness and then I was the one who moved them and so light came up upon them and this magic moment it was for me so like wow this is so old and we as human beings we are not as old as these fossils and so i really felt so so small and the perspective changed so totally for me just like Yeah, it was some of these magic moments you sometimes have. And um, so I really had to make this video where you see humans as kind of shadows and uh, trying to measuring the world and doing some gestures and but not really knowing what to do and not not understanding. They're just doing and doing, keeping on going like to us. do something <laughs> yes like, like us absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah. So. also this um, wonderful symbol a very poetic symbol that our existence in this long history of the earth is just a, um, a shadow just very ephemeral we come and go maybe I just yes. looked it up. A uh, shifa is slate. This kind of stuff. Oh yeah, called yeah, yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yes. One yes, art lover easy. told us oh. that's yeah. great, oh, yeah. and then uh, I have to remember that. Thank you. What that's I like very much about this work as well is this deepness of the black of the of the person. It's mm, it's yeah, like yeah. like this projection that that you have if you when you have it on the slate, it's like let's like velvet. It's like very yeah. interesting. Yeah, and also the, the proportions. I can just move my hand into the image. You see how super tiny the figures are and their hands. And when the hands spread the fingers, you can still see every detail. And it's really, it's really um, touching to see these little creatures. And in fact, Johanna, it's yourself, right? Thank you. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I didn't tell you because uh, I, in the beginning, I wanted to work with a dancer. Um, And uh, before I did some sketches to explain better what I wanted to do. And so I did these videos and then I did work with a dancer. And then I realized, no, it's not working because the dancer is so perfect. And so because the body is so trained and so every movement is so precise. And then I decided to uh, use my sketch material for the work because it's sometimes it's not perfect i'm sometimes like a little struggling and sometimes having like this searching movements and not perfect and um yeah so this this was also very very interesting to me 
so I just wanted to show the proportions. Yeah, very nice work, fantastic. And um, yeah, you have shown it in Paris in the yes. exhibition yes. during Paris Photo, which mm -hmm. was really amazing as well. Yeah. And also at, in Leverkusen at yeah. the Schloss Mausbruch. Yeah. yeah. So there are different variations of it and it's really beautiful. Yeah. Actually, it's it's uh, a, a an edition, a small edition. So it, um, several there are several works, but um, they are always unique because the stones are yeah. the same. Yeah, there's, there's a, a question, question coming on. Yeah, yeah, um, which, yeah absolutely, which, Joan Jonas. Uh, uh, yeah, I shall read your question for everyone. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> which artist which, has you been influenced yeah. by during your career? The shape and movement evokes work I've seen by Joan Jonas. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. She's the, the queen of uh, performance video. She's absolutely a wonderful artist, also with the um, reflections, mirrors, um, absolutely. Yes, of course, there is, uh, yeah, she's, she's a great artist. But also other performance artists like Bruce Nauman, I also um, like his work a lot. And so many, many others I um Yeah, I, I can't uh, name them all, but of course there there are always these kinds of influences, and um, yeah, but by especially I I'm very happy to have also a lot of female artists. I'm thinking about like also um, when I think about the gallery. Ulrike Rosenbach, uh, for example, yes, she's really such a, a wonderful uh, artist. Also, with, of course, uh, yeah, yeah, she's she's really done great, great work. Also, with the body performance, and I think, yeah, this is also an influence, of course. And I'm very happy that I I know her in person, and that's that's a wonderful thing. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I'm very happy that I have you and Ulrike here in the gallery as artists, very important artists from, from my gallery. Yeah, and um, Johanna, we have 45 minutes already, you know, time is really very, very <laughs> quick passing <Running>. by. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we are not showing really the gallery at the moment because uh, in the basement uh, we are we are preparing um, an inventory and it's really like a little bit chaotic at the, at the basement. So, but a living nice. storage. Yeah, living storage exactly. <laughs> but um, yeah, hope to see you soon again. Come visit us. Absolutely, if you have time. I have to. Yeah. And um, is, is the, are you st do, do, uh, still doing homeschooling now with your son? Or oh, you... yeah, oh. <laughs> of course. It's very so funny. Please come visit us. <laughs> yeah, we, we really, we have once a week, we have school for three hours. Okay. Wow. Uh, just wow. like he has school, not me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, my dear. It was great speaking to you. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, thank and, you and so much. Keep on like this. So. You are really fantastic. It's amazing what you are doing. Yeah. Thank you so much. You will. Thank you. You're thank welcome. You. So thank, thank you for you. everybody who was listening. So bye-bye. Bye-bye.